If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're not new, welcome back. Today we are going to be continuing on with our Laravel e-commerce series, and I want to introduce search functionality into our project. To handle our search, we're going to be using Algolia. And Algolia is basically a system where you can set up any kind of search that you want to have. So if you want to use just a search box, or if you want to use a search page or have recommended features, you can customize it and it's free. Now to get us set up, what we can do is create a new account. I already have one, so I'm not going to do one. But if you don't have one set up, you can go ahead and set it up right with this button here. I'm going to go ahead and log in and then I'll be right back. Now it's been a while since I created this account and I do believe that within 15 days or so of you creating the account is a trial version where you have access to every single part of the Algolia system. But after that 15 days, it just turns into a regular free account. So you don't really have to worry about that. For our purposes, we don't really need to upgrade anything. We can just keep the same free basic account. That's absolutely fine. Now, as you can see up here, this is Coder Shop Demo. This is the one that I set up for when I first built the project. So if you caught the preview episode, this is the same application that I was using. But what I want to do is I want to go ahead and create a new one so that I can show you how to set it up. So this application name, I'm just going to call it Coder Shop. And it's going to be a free subscription products. It's pretty much it. As you can see, they've just added, well, I'm not sure how long ago, but they've added this recommended feature, which is something I'm interested in checking out. I'm not going to be doing it for this project, but it is something worth taking a look at. So now we can go ahead and click next set up data center. And I'm in the US, so I'll just pick one there. And what you want to do is you want to pick the one closest to you. This way you'll have faster response times for your searches. That's pretty much it. You can choose anywhere you want, but it's recommended that you choose the one that's closest to you. So now we'll go review application details. And as you can see, it's free. We'll get 10,000 searches a month, up to 10,000 records, units per month. The plan is free. Overage price. So if you go over that, it'll be $1.50. And for recommended, same thing. It's free. 10,000 requests. And if you go over, then it's $1.50. And your type of commitment is free. Fantastic. So what's a unit? One unit equals a thousand search requests and a maximum of a thousand records. And you can click here to learn more. I have read and accept and I accept the terms of service. Make sure you read that. That's very important. Create application. Okay. So it essentially wants us to give the database information and we do have that, but we're not going to set it up this way just yet. What we're going to do is we're going to set up our API keys. So to do that, we're going to go to the settings tab right on the left. And then we want to go to the API keys under team and access. And here are where our keys are set up. You have one for the application ID and one for the search only API key. And these are the two that you need. You don't really need the admin API key for what we're using, but if you want to, you can also set that up. Before we set that up, what I want to do is I want to take a look at the Laravel documentation. In here, Algolia essentially leverages Laravel Scout, which is a first party package that comes with Laravel. You just need to install it. It has different ways of setting this up. As you can see, there are requisites, indexes, searchable data. These are all things that we're going to be using. We're just going to do it through Algolia first. And if you head down, it tells you to use Laravel Scout, then to publish the vendor files, use the searchable trait, and then to also bring in the Algolia search client. Let's head back into the Algolia documentation so we can start setting that up. Now, Scout Extended is what Algolia is going to be using to connect our Laravel to our Algolia. And like I said, it's just built on top of Laravel Scout, which I just showed you. I will be leaving links to all of these things that we're using today. I'm going to be leaving them in the description down below and as a pinned comment because the Algolia docs, they're great, but they can be a little tricky to navigate around. So I'm going to leave links to everything that we're using so that you guys can access them a little bit quicker. So that was the explanation of Scout Extended. Let's go ahead and install it. And as you can see, the PHP requirement is 7.3 and above, also for Laravel 8 and above. And this basically tells you how to upgrade. So if you already have it installed and you're on version 1, this tells you how to do it to version 2. Okay, let's go ahead and copy this. And this is what we're going to be installing. Head into the terminal. Paste that in. Let that run. Okay, so if we scroll up, you can see that it's installed the Algolia search client dash PHP. It's installed the Scout Extended. It's also installed Scout and the PHP encoder that it's going to need as well. Fantastic. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to publish the vendor files. 
OK, and that's created a config slash scout.php. And if we go to that folder, you see it right here. Let's drop this. As you can see, this is the driver, scout driver. It's already pre-configured to Algolia for us. The environment files also pre-configured. The queue, if you want to set up queues, which is a pretty good idea to do. If you're doing search, then it's a pretty good idea to set up the queues. After commit, chunk searchable, soft deletes, identify. These are the credentials that we're going to be needing. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this real quick. We'll go to the .env files. And I'm going to go ahead and drop them under the mix stripe key. And then if we head down a little more, it tells you to use this searchable trait. We're going to add it to our product model. Okay, and where it says has factory, we can just add searchable. And then make sure we import that. Okay, and as you can see, it's right up here. Then we can also set it up queue true. We don't really have to right now, but if you are going to be setting up queues, then this is how you do it in the config file. Now we can go ahead and start adding our API keys. So from here, we first need the application ID. And that we can put in the .env, right where it says Algolia app ID. And then for the secret, we need to grab the admin API key because this will allow us to delete and to make changes to any of the indexes that we use. Go ahead, paste that here. And because we are using this on the front end, we wanna do something similar to like we did with the Stripe key. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy these, paste them here, and then I'm gonna add the mix equals Then go ahead, paste in the app ID and the app secret. Fantastic. Now, if we head back to the Algolia documentation, we can go to the quick start and then we can try this PHP artisan scout import. And what this will do is it'll import whatever models we're using that we have the searchable trait on it. It'll import that to our Algolia. Okay, let me open up the terminal. Paste that in. And now you can see it's imported. Well, first it's flushed it, which means it just got rid of anything that was in the Algolia dashboard. It just flushed anything that was in there. And then it imported the model, the app model that we have that searchable trait on. And now the records have been imported. So let's go check out that dashboard now. We go right to where we have our API keys. We can just go back to home. Okay, we don't have anything in there yet. Let's check search. Okay, your data has successfully been imported. You can use the search bar to consult and manage records. And this is just a quick little tutorial for it. But as you can see, we have the women's nine, women's eight, and it's just basically defaulted to having all of the attributes. As you can see, it has the description, product code, women's nine. We have a total of 48 hits match in the search. So here's just a little test. If we go to search and we type in kids, you can see it starts to filter through the kids. And this is basically what we're going to be seeing on the front end, but it will be a lot more user friendly. So now if we take a quick walkthrough, that PHP Scout import is what we just used. And then we imported to Algolia, which is the same function. If you had a different model that you wanted to use, or it's just not searchable, it, it's searchable automatically, but you can also specify it in the request when you import it. So that's another option too. But as you can see, we didn't actually need to do that. Again, this is the PHP Artisan Scout Flush command that will just basically drop everything. It's kind of like when you're using a database, when you drop an entire table or an entire database and just sort of flush it out and it brings you right back to whatever your default state was. So that's what this scout flush is doing. You can also keep data in sync by using these functions in your controller, which we're not really gonna need because it will automatically update whenever we add an item into the cart. So these are just some other rules and regulations to take note of. You also have a function to put in a model, which is should be searchable and return this as published. And that's another function that's in the searchable trait. You can also pause indexing. We don't really need to do that. 
but it is here. I highly suggest that you take a look at this documentation and test out things, try things out. Another thing that we can do here is to optimize the search experience by setting up exactly what we want to go into that import, okay, which is this PHP Artisan Scout Optimize. And what this will do is it'll give us another config file where we can manage exactly what we want to have searchable. So we can do attributes. You can just make different things to it. We're going to go ahead and do that. This way, I'll show you how you can customize exactly what you want to be imported to Algolia. Go ahead, run that command. OK, so it's created a whole new config file for us. Please review the settings and synchronize it with Algolia using the artisan command scout sync. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and check out that new config file. As you can see, it's scout dash products, which is the name of the index that we're going to have. That's the name of our index is products. So here we've got the name, slug, details, description. This already auto-populated based on what we imported into Algolia already. Now for us, we don't need all of these. I'm just going to use, we can get rid of slug. We can get rid of product code and we can keep price, but I'm also going to want to add categories. I'll add that down here. And remember, categories is on an entirely different model. It's connected by a pivot table. We'll deal with that in the model in a bit, but then we have custom ranking where you can change if you want it to be based on created at, updated at, descending. As you can see by the example up here, you can do it by comments count, views count, and these are just different fields in the database. Now for us, I don't want this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and change this to null because we're not gonna need to rank anything at all, so we'll just leave it as null. And as you can see, that's another, I'll change it like this. That's just another option that you can have and also the array that we just got rid of. Remove stop words and we can just leave that as null. Disable typo tolerance. We can also go ahead and just change that for our purposes. I'm going to leave it at null. Attributes for faceting. Now this will allow us to use the categories as a separate field. And it says ours comes with no categories, but we do have categories. So we'll add that in a bit. And it's just saying you can use it to calculate categories or filters or just add more filters to our set of records. Let's see, unretrievable attributes. We'll leave it null. Ignore plurals, null. Query language, I'm going to keep it in English. And distinct, using this attribute, you can limit the number of returned records. We're just going to leave it as null. And that's pretty much it. So now we can head back to the documentation, okay? And it just pretty much went through everything that we just did. You can sync, um, you can sync using this function. We already have our settings path, custom index name. We're not gonna be worrying about because it's just gonna be products and then searchable as. Basically, it just concatenates the configuration for what it's searchable as, but our searchable as is products, so that's fine. Um, you can also do per environment index name. So depending if you're in production environment or you're in your development environment, you can have multiple sets of indices for whichever environment that you're in. Okay, so now we want to go to the next step, which is customize searchable data. This is just basically giving us a function to add to our searchable array. Okay, so we can go ahead and I'm just going to grab this and copy it. Then we're going to head back to the product model and I'm going to put it right under where we're listing out our fillables. Now, all this is really saying is that the array, which is the product model, okay, the products that we have coming in from the product model, we're gonna set them to an array, which is gonna have all the fields, but we just customized that in the Scout products config file, but we also need to include the categories now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this, and then I'm gonna add array two. Then I'm gonna say that equals We'll open up some brackets for an array. And we're going to add our categories here. And then we're going to say this, categories. And all we want from these categories is the name. So we're going to pluck that and add that to array. If we have anything else that we want to add to this searchable, this is where we can do it. Okay, any other relationship that we have to the products. So now instead of return array, we're going to say array, merge, then we're going to say array, 
and then Array 2. Fantastic. So I want to grab that other command. And this is in the configure index. So now we can do copy this PHP artisan scout sync. Okay, so a remote settings does not exist. It's uploading it now from the config file. So let's go and check out our dashboard now. Refresh the page. So let's take a look. We have all of our attributes here. This was exactly the same thing. Now what we want to do is go to configuration and this has a little setup for us. Let's talk about ranking. Uh, you can go ahead and read that if you'd like. Read that if you like. Let's take a look. So if you remember, we didn't do anything for ranking, but if we go to searchable attributes, our searchable attributes are the name, details, description, price, and categories, and that's exactly what we wanted. Now, you can also add these things in here manually, but I find that if you have the config file, that it's much better to do it that way. This way, everything stays in sync with whatever's in your app. All you really want to do here is just to check and to make sure that everything is set up the correct way. And if it's not, then you can go ahead and adjust that within your config app. So anytime you sync it up or do anything like that, everything will stay in sync. The other thing too, as you saw when we basically re-imported everything, what happened was it said that there's no remote. And what that means is we haven't made any changes in this page right here, but if we did, then that would throw that kind of a flag. And if we changed it in here, then it would want to know if we want to import from the remote or if we want to import from the configuration file that we have. So just bear that in mind when you're doing this. If you do it just straight from the config file, then you should be good to go. So now that we have the information heading into Algolia like we want, the first thing that I want to do is I want to check out the documentation for view instance search. And this is under the API reference tab that is up here. Again, I'll leave the links in the description for all of these. What we're going to be using is the view instance search. And that's the page that we have right here. Basically, it's just a list of different components that you can use to have autocomplete. You can have panels. It's just, these are the components that you use to create your search. And we will have to install the library to use this. I just want to give you a quick preview of it. This link right here will take you to the showcase for the view instant search widgets, which you can take a look at here. And you can see this is an entire page that is built with all of those components as part of it. So you have an autocomplete, you have just basically some other components. The one that we're going to be focused on today is the autocomplete. And that's just going to be this little search bar right here. And if you go ahead and click onto it, you'll see that this gives you a list of different items that you can go to, okay, with the price, the name, the image, all that kind of stuff. And that's what we're going to be focused on today. Back at the View Instant Search documentation, we'll go ahead to install the library. And we want to head down to the NPM install and then copy that and then we'll bring that into the project. Okay, great. So now to get this to display, we're going to replace this search with our search input, but there are a few things that we need to set up first. I want to go ahead and create a new controller for us. And I want to put it in a search folder. And I want to call it Algolia Search Controller. We're not going to make it resourceful or anything. It's just going to be super simple. I already went over this in the previous episode when we were cutting down some of the routes and just doing some code cleanup. So I'm not going to do that again. but that episode will show you how to do that. So let's go ahead to our Algolia search controller. And in here, I just want one function. It's just going to be an index. And in here, we're going to add a query. And this is just going to be the request item because that's what we're getting back from Algolia is the request item. And I want to create another property called products and we're going to say it's product search. We're going to be looking for that query and we just want to get. 
then for now we'll just return products. And let's go ahead and create that route. Now, since this is just gonna be, it's not gonna be dependent on whether a user is authenticated or not, we don't need to put it in our auth routes. So here I'll just say search and the route will be a get route. We're gonna call it search Algolia. We're gonna use that new controller class will be index and then the name will be search Algolia index okay and let's make sure that's imported okay great so now how I want to do this is I want to create a component so we'll go to our resources folder, JS components, and I'll create another one. It's going to be a search folder. And in the search folder, we'll call it auto complete dot view. Add some template tags and script tags. And this needs to be export default define component and then we want a data property we'll return and let me move this over and this define component should actually just be from view And then here we're going to need our search client. And that search client is going to be from our environment variables where we're bringing in our API keys. So here we're going to need Algolia search. And we'll need the process env mix Algolia app ID. And then here we'll need Algolia app. I want to change this to search just so that we're being specific about which API key we're using, which it is already here. <laughs> Great, fantastic. The other thing is we also need to import that Algolia search. Okay, great. Now, if we go and take a look at our list of components, I keep calling them components, but Algolia references them as widgets. Whenever I say component, when it's related to these, just know that it's a widget. I'll try to remember to use widget, but I've been using the word component when I do mean widget. It's really simple. All of these widgets basically have different parameters that you can pass in through them. And you can put hits per page. You can put the analytics. You can put all different sorts of things in here. And this is basically what we're going to use to develop our UI for that autocomplete widget. So if we head back, the first that we're going to use is this AIS instant search. Then we're going to open it up. and the parameter that we need to pass in through here, it'll be index name equals products. That's the name of our index in our Algolia dashboard. Then we also need to pass in the search client. And this is just gonna be the search client that we are bringing in here with our credentials. And within this widget, we're gonna bring in AIS configure. And what this will allow us to do is it'll allow us to configure the different things that we're going to need in here. So one of the parameters that we can pass in here is the attributes to snippet. And here we're going to pass in an array. We're going to need the name, details, description, and categories. 
Uh, this attributes to snippet is just the attributes that we imported as part of our searchable attributes. The snippet is just going to make it so that it is shorter. So as soon as we type, it'll start to look for it. And then we need hits per page camel equals five. So we're going to have five hits per page. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and paste in some code. This way you don't have to watch me type all of it out. And this is the autocomplete widget. So all I've done was I've styled it. In the template, we are bringing in the current refinement, indices, refine, and then we're just styling some more. We're going to have a search function in here. So the input is type search. The value is the current refinement, placeholder, autofocus, input. This is to allow us to be able to tab down through the menu. And then when we press enter, that'll be the search method that we'll call. We're also going to have a search icon, which I've already brought into the icons page that we have where we're pulling in all of our icons. This is where we just extracted it out just to make it a little cleaner. Okay. And then we have, if there is a current refinement dot length, then it will loop over the item in the indices. And the key is the item dot object ID. We have the VF indices length, the item dot index name. And these are the links so that we'll be able to click the results as we get them. And this just has the image, this has the name, and then we have some highlighting here. Let's go ahead and also bring in this link. One more thing before we do that, this AI is powered by, basically since we're using free accounts, Algolia really wants you to, if you're going to use the free account to make sure that you have this, just saying that this search isn't something that I just created on my own, that this is powered by. Algolia and they give you a cool little widget to have there and you can have a I think it's a light mode and a dark mode for it so that's what that is let's go ahead and bring in our link so let's try to use this component somewhere I say we do the shop index page Okay, so this is where we're displaying that search text that we have here. So we can do auto complete. Let's see if we are getting anything. Okay, and it looks like we broke something. Let's take a look. Okay, so we're not bringing any of these in. Let's check why. Actually, I do know exactly why. In our app.js, we need to import that instant search. So under here, we'll do import instant search from view instant search. And then we need view three, and then we need ES. And then we need to bring that in down here. Okay, let's try it again. Cool, so we have our little search functionality here. And let's try, okay, let me open this so we can see it better. Okay, so as you can see, as you type, you see that this is highlighted. And if you go down, we only have five. And this is the widget that I was talking about with the search by Algolia. And then let's try home goods, home goods. And now we can tab. If you press your tab button, it'll just loop through everything. Let me move that so it's clear. Press enter. And now we've gone to that search page. So let's go ahead and put this component on this shop index page. Same thing. So again, we have the search in here. Okay, let's try it here. Very cool. 
If you're enjoying the content, please go ahead and click that like button as it really does help out the channel. Here's a video YouTube thinks you'll like and here's the playlist to follow along. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.